Hello, I'm John Pinto, and I'm presenting Dominique Prenet's course on celestial navigation. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the sextant and uh, some more corrections you need to make to its reading. We'll be talking about semi-diameter, refraction, and parallax. You can find more about Dominique's books at marinenavigationbooks.com where you can find where to order his books and also download resources uh, for the course, including an exercise book uh, and also this slide deck, which we're going to be uh, presenting in this course. So the first correction we want to talk about is the semi-diameter uh, correction. And basically that has to do with being able to take into account the size of the celestial body that you're working with. And usually, uh, this really only comes into play for the sun and the moon, because those are the only bodies that are large enough to show us a disk. Now, when we do celestial navigation, the calculations uh, that we're going to be comparing against always are assuming that the angle is to the center of the body. Now, normally when you're uh, measuring your angle of your celestial body, let's, say, let's take the sun, you typically will be only measuring from the horizon to either the lower limb or the upper limb. And 99% of the time, you're going to use the lower limb, if at all possible, because it's the easiest one to use. But because we're measuring the lower limb, we have to take into account this semi-diameter. So the correction, uh, which we'll be doing for the semi-diameter, uh, will tell us how to take this uh, angle that uh, we observe, which is this, you know, smaller angle and gives us this semi-diameter correction so that we get the full height, sorry, the full height that we really want, the full altitude that we want. So that's the first correction. The next correction we have to take care of is refraction. Because we are looking through the atmosphere, uh, the uh, angle that we actually are looking at for the sun is not the exact true angle of where the sun truly is. So there's an apparent where we see it versus where it truly is, and that's this refraction piece. And again, we measure this longer angle, but what we really want is this smaller angle. And so the refraction correction takes care of that for us. And <clears throat> as you can see here, depending on where you're observing the sun, if it's lower down, you're going to get more of a refraction correction. Whereas if it's closer to being, you know, high up above, you're going to get very little of a refraction error. So the refraction error is going to depend on the angle at which you measure the sun at. The final correction is parallax. Now for the sun, this is a very small uh, correction. For the moon, this is very large. And it has to do with the fact that our boat is not at the center of the Earth, right? We're not measuring it from the, uh, the theoretical horizon you would have at the center of the Earth up to uh, the celestial body. And the way you visualize this is by the angle from that body to either where you are and to the center of the Earth. And this parallax angle uh, needs to be adjusted as well from your uh, sextant height to bring it down to the height you would measure at the center of the Earth. Now, the stars and, the, and most of the planets are so far away, this angle is minuscule uh, or barely even noticeable. So there really is, is no correction. For the sun, there's a very small correction, maybe you know, a couple of tenths of a minute. Uh, but for the moon, it'll be many, many minutes of, of, of angle that we have to handle. Uh, for parallax, because the moon is just so close to us. There's also sometimes a small parallax correction for Venus and Mars, uh, but again, uh, it, it is, it's small, and when we get to planets and the moon, uh, we'll be going over that. And again, uh, a lot of this depends on the height at which you're observing the body, just like with uh, refraction. Uh, if the body is very low on the horizon, you're going to have a larger parallax angle. If the body is higher up in the sky, there's going to be a very much smaller parallax correction. So the parallax uh, correction definitely depends on 
how high above the horizon you're you're observing that uh, that body. In fact, when we get to the moon, you're going to see that this parallax correction is called horizontal parallax because of the fact that it's at its greatest when the object is near the horizon. For the sun, which is probably what you mostly be taking sights on, um, all of these corrections are all put together into one little table for you. So you don't have to think about each individual um, correction. They're all put together for you. So for the sun, the corrections are either are based on the time of year, so either October through March or April through September. And the reason for that is because uh, depending on where the Earth is in its orbit around the sun, we're either farther away or closer to it. So this uh, table is broken up this way to take that small um, difference in distance from the sun uh, into account. So again, what you do here is you look for the uh, apparent altitude, which we'll get to when we, we go through all the calculations, and you see where you fall in here, and you find the correction either plus if you're on the lower limb or minus if you're on the upper limb from your sextant angle. And again, just like with dip, if you err exactly at it at a particular value, you take the uh, number that's that's above it. And uh, again, Let's go back here for one moment. This uh, is on that card I mentioned that um, comes with the almanac and you can use it as a bookmark. And it's very handy because it has all of these uh, values that you need pretty much on every single uh, sextant site right in front of you. And again, this is just highlighting that, that table for you. And again, in Dominique's exercise book, you'll have some exercises you could, you could practice with. Uh, and like I said, at the back of the book are the answers, so you can uh, check yourself. And that's it for the sextant for now. Uh, we'll be coming back to it uh, later uh, when we get to the moon and the planets. But for right now, you've pretty much seen everything you need to know about the sextant. Um, so we're now going to move on to a um, very important concept of time and longitude. And we will get to that in our next episode, and we hope to see you there.